channel, and we are honored to have Serena Poon with us today, who I was lucky to meet a few weeks ago, a few months ago at a conference or at a, at a really fun event that we were at, and we were sitting next to each other, and we started chatting, and we totally discovered that we're all into the same things and same mindset, so I'm mm -hmm. so happy to have you here in this on this uh, podcast. And uh, Serena, a little bit about you. You are a celebrity chef, nutritionist, and Reiki master, right? Yes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're incredibly popular. I mean, you're all over the place. You you talk in conferences, you do different seminars, and um, you also have a TV show called Serena Loves, yes. which anyone can watch on YouTube or on Spotify um, and all everywhere you can find podcasts and, and those things. And you also have product lines that you've developed, which we're going to talk about too, like Just Add Water, which I love. I'm drinking some right now. Hey. Fell in love with it the first time I <laughs> first time I ever had some. So I'm eager to dive in with you about all things holistic nutrition and especially, especially culinary alchemy that yes. sounds really really interesting but before we get to culinary alchemy let's find out a little bit about you like what was your journey what brought you to this point um how did you end up in la doing nutrition and and cooking for the stars <laughs> <laughs> well first thank you both so much for having me here today i was so excited and i loved when we met it was just so synchronistic and yeah. we are all sort of in that same heart tribe and same mindset of you know whole body health and helping everyone get there so thank you so much again for having me it's really an honor um my journey really started uh, with my parents. So when I was in college, my um, my dad was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. So it was something that was, you know, genetic. His grandfather had also passed on the same thing, and he he was, you know, careful about it. And is during well as an adult checked it every six months or so. Um, and in between two six month checkups. Um, it somehow got to stage four. Oh, wow. So, um, and that was something that I couldn't even really process at the time. None of us could. And obviously incredibly unprepared. And, you know, while he was, you know, getting treated, we had, he did traditional Western medicine, which is the chemotherapy and the radiation. And then we also had Chinese medicine in our, we had, you know, family that was like smuggling herbs in from like China and Hong Kong for us. And we really tried everything. Um, and he was only with us for about a year and three months um, when he lost that battle. And then uh, two months later, and he was really young, he was like 48. Um, and then two months after he passed, our mom was diagnosed with cancer. She was 45, and it was some rare form of ovarian cancer that the doctors, you know, they can date from the size of the tumor and the, and the speed of growth that pretty much came about when my dad was at his sickest and dying because there's no history of cancer in her side of the family. So during that time, I mean, I just, I really dived into like plants and herbs and trying to find ways to give him either comfort or alleviate some of the symptoms of the disease or of the treatment um, because that was all I knew to do to, to help. Um, and in that process, and I, had, I was studying nutrition in college just out of because I just, you know, had an interest in it. And growing up, we're a family of foodies, you know, and my parents always cooked. So um, that was really kind of how I started getting into food as healing was during that time in my life and just wanting to find ways, again, to just provide some sort of comfort. Um, and, you know, instead of going to law school, which is what I was supposed to do, I was like first generation Chinese American, I decided to go to culinary school so that I could really understand and take, you know, the culinary arts and apply it to food and use it as, you know, food as healing and as medicine. And so that was sort of how my journey really began. Not um, just any culinary school. You went to Cordon Bleu, right? I did. Yeah. I studied the Cordon Bleu <laughs> because um, it's just, I wanted to be able to give the best, you yeah. know, and at that time it was such a like instant perspective shift. You know, you're like 20, 21, and your priorities are so 20, 21-year-old. And then this happens, and all that was important at the time was just the health and happiness of the people that I loved, and that was it. And it was a great, you know, a great goal and a great promise to give to my dad, you know, even though it wasn't what he asked of me. But ironically, in that process, I was letting go of self-care. Mm. 
and not, you know, and kind of sacrificing my own needs and my own sleep and energy just to make sure everyone else is okay, which is how eventually in my own sort of journey and personal development, it led me to spirituality, which is what led me to Reiki and that sort of intuitive, you know, spiritual nutrition and energy work that I give to my clients now. Um, But that was sort of how it began. And when I was in culinary school, they did something called an estage with like the top students in the school towards the end of your your time there and they took you to the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is like where that was that was where the night before a party was before the Oscars and it was a really big deal. Um and all the top A listers, I think this is like before reality T V was a thing. So like mm-hmm. You know, the, it was like the Brad Pitts and the, so, so real the Halle Berry. <laughs> right. Celebrities were actually like, like real celebrity like really actors. Right? Um, and I remember I was there and I'm working in this party and and I'm walking around and it was all these incredible stars. And, and I remember I'm at my shrimp scampi station and I'm cooking shrimp scampi and I look up and it's Harrison Ford who's like, Indiana Jones. I mean, <laughs> I grew up thinking I was going to be an archaeologist. I was like, you know, seven. <laughs> um, and I thought, this is what I want to be doing. These are the caliber of people that I want to be working for and cooking for. And I have such a connection with people and with food that I I, I didn't want to just be on the other side of a swinging door in a big kitchen. You know, I wanted to be able to have that rapport with my clients. And so that's how I started my professional career was I went from that. I did an internship with um, at the Playboy Mansion for Hess. Um, and then they hired me on after. So that was my first job. Um, and then from there, I was there for about a year and a half. And then I started my own, uh, you know, private chef and catering business. And so, and that, and I added a nutrition. That, so that's that kind of like the beginning of the journey. Wow. Um, so Playboy got you started. They he did, did that for a lot of people, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of girls, but you just in the culinary world. <laughs> for me, just in the kitchen. Gotcha. You know, they did try to get me in the magazine. <laughs> they, these people. <laughs> That's so funny. So. I'm sure they would have loved an edition of that in the kitchen and, you know, that whole experience. Yeah. It was, you know, if I were to write a book that that what that would probably take up at least two or three chapters. I bet. All kinds of fun, sure. interesting stories. I bet you see some crazy things. <laughs> I did. I did. While cooking. Yeah, while cooking. <laughs> no. That's funny. So what's really interesting about your approach is um, one of the things I really love about your approach is you tie in spirituality with nutrition. And yeah. so I want to hear more about the interconnections there and how you do that. Um, well, again, that it really kind of came from my personal journey. It was, mm-hmm. I was doing all the right things, you know, from like a nutrition standpoint, from food, physically, but I also had some health issues that really kind of came from uh, what happened with my parents and not really processing that experience and not understanding that 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 was a form of PTSD for what had happened with our family and sort of this instant overnight change and um, not having the proper guidance or support and also not knowing how to get it. So that sort of stress, and as I said, I sort of gave up my self-care because I thought that that self-sacrifice would better everyone else around me. Um, and, uh, and so I had some of my own health issues. So I had to have a surgery um, to remove some, you know, damaged tissue caused from inflammation. And from that surgery, um, I got MRSA, basically, mm. like straight out of the OR. Um, and that stayed with me. I ended up having eight surgeries um, to try and kind of get rid of it. It was just sort of had just dug itself deep inside um, in my chest. And it was a thing. It was an, an issue for for several years. And um, I almost died after two surgeries um, wow. because one, I had a massive hematoma like 12 days post-op mm. um, and bled. I lost almost like two liters of blood. It was, it was kind of crazy. But during that part of my journey, it was what I realized I wasn't really taking care of myself on an emotional and a mindful level. And so that really brought me to, you know, a stronger mindset and diving into spirituality. And I realized how much that helped me. And so I started implementing that into my programs with my clients because because there was a period of about six months I really couldn't even use like my my left arm, you know, and like this upper portion of my body. And as a chef, mm. 
that's kind of important, you know? And so during that time, I was like, okay, what do I do? You know, this is my career. How am I going to support myself? How am I going to, how am I going to get through this? And I realized I was giving so much nutritional information. It was just part of what I did as a, as a private chef, um, that I decided I would branch out and really do this nutritional consulting. That's become such a core part of my, my, um, practice. Um, and Going into that direction and adding the spirituality made me realize how much, like how important that was as a as a pillar of um, of the business of my practice. And diving in and understanding how certain foods actually, you know, connect with your your energetic body, you know. And if you believe in energy and the chakra system and all these different modalities, you know, whether they're they're meridians from a Chinese medicine perspective and these pressure points or your chakra system, there are foods that can support every one of those systems. And so, you know, each each of us is different. So there's no exact program that it, there's no one size fits all. But as I've worked with clients, I've realized, okay, we do food intolerance tests as you do. And we see what your, you know, what are inflammation points for you, but we also factor in uh, what's going on with your life? You know, like where where are you at right now? Are you in a place where you need some more emotional support? Are you in a place where you're healing from maybe a breakup or a loss, or you're preparing for a surgery or healing from one? There are foods that kind of help ground you into your own body. There are foods that help connect you to your own body because we all have that. You know, we have we all have that beacon. You know, we all have that intuitive knowing. And so it's feeding your body and supporting yourself in a way where you connect a little bit more. So obviously no processed foods, you know, whole foods, connecting with mother nature, connecting with foods and the energy from say plants is so important to connecting with yourself and knowing what's right for your body. So that's, you know, kind of how that sort of developed. Wow. Is that what culinary alchemy is? That's basically what culinary alchemy wow. is. It's that magic. It's combining, you know, the education that I share with all, you know, the clients or my platform, my community with nutrition that's sort of built from a functional approach, an integrative approach, mm-hmm. holistic approach, and then also connecting with that um, intuitive energy, which I can provide working one-on-one with people. But I like to be able, I like to teach it as well so that you can connect, you know, to your own energetic body and know and understand how you can feed that to support your physical body in that way. It's oh. amazing. On this journey that you've been on, has there been any big kind of revelations along the way or kind of, you know, nuggets of wisdom that you can share that are, you know, it seems like a lot of what you do is very personalized and individualized. Sure. But what, I guess, universal um, philosophies have been really impactful for you that, you know, we can share with listeners that they could try to incorporate into their own life? Um. There, I mean, there's actually quite a few. Um, I would say that the power of mindset is so key, right? And everything, I mean, whether it's a motivational speaker or a coach or you know, uh, your nutritionist, everyone can tell you some, can tell you their own methods, but it really comes from the same place. So what I like to teach people is it's this little test that I've done, you know, and it's really reading your body. Like you can read your body to know something connects with you or not. It could even be blueberries, you know, and blueberries may be great um, and they're really healthy, but they may not be good for your body. And so there's a way, there's something that I teach people to, um, to connect with your body. And it's a simple little practice that you can do at home. Um, And it's where you, you can take two pieces of paper, they identical, like a post-it note, right? And then write down one thing that from, say it's a, it's a food, something that you really, really love. And it can, it can be pizza. It can be anything that you really love and you feel it. You actually feel it like almost viscerally. Like in, when you think about that food, like you have, your body has a physical response to it, right? Write that down on that piece of paper, fold it up. On the other paper, write down something that you absolutely cannot stand. Like you don't, you, it, it can be anything, but you think about this food and you're just like, ugh, you have a physical response, but you don't like that. You can almost feel what happened last time you had it, which is something terrible. So write it down, same size piece of paper, fold it up so it's the same. Take these two pieces of paper, put it in your hands, shake it up, have one in each hand, and then and then ask yourself which hand is holding the food that you love. 
and you your body actually that your everything is energy your body and your mind they connect and you can do it a few times obviously and there will be little messages and indicators that your body physically gives you as it's connecting to that feeling that you have mm-hmm. so practice this, try this. It's something that a healer actually taught me. And so once you kind of get that muscle going, that's an that's an exercise that you can use for almost everything. So whether it's food, like, do I really want that? Or is that something I'm just like feeding my ego, feeding my brain? I'm just trying to procrastinate. Like, do I really want that food? What is it that I want to eat? Or do I, or a decision for something, whether mm-hmm. it's a job or a meeting or whatever it is, like your body, your mind and your body can, can, will connect and tell you if that's something that you want to do. So it's a really quick, easy little practice that anyone can do. And the more you do it, the more you, you pick up those little um, indicators, the messages that your body gives you. That's really so cool. It's, we, we do food sensitivity tests through blood draw, and mm-hmm. I feel like you're just you're doing it through like intuition through that, <laughs> through that yeah. process. Like, what's gonna really resonate with yeah. me? Yeah, and uh, imagine now we combine. So in my practice, we combine those food sensitivity tests and those inflammation markers. So we've got the labs, mm-hmm. and then we have sort of like an intake with like what your lifestyle, and what your goals are, and then we add this energetic, you know, sort of like test, which is very much the same. So when you have it all in front of you, you really can sort of create. And craft, right, you like get a full picture your, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I can do it with you. We can, it's like like a one time consult, or you can kind of figure out how to do it on your own because you see it all in front of you. Wow. And what's really important is to remember that that you are like we I think we're all so hard on ourselves these days and there's so much comparing going on and something that I always remind myself of and something that I still have to work on all the time is that. There is no one that is me, and that makes me incredibly powerful. Mm. And it's something that we have to remind ourselves of all the time because then that makes self-care such an absolute, like, non-negotiable thing. And self-care is the first thing that we cross off our list when our days are busy, you know, when we've got a lot of other responsibilities, whether we have kids or, you know, tons of employees or whatever it is. Self-care is usually one of the top three things to go. Mm -hmm. And when you realize how important you are and what you bring and how no one else can bring what you bring, it's like it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. You know, because it's your responsibility towards everyone else in the world too, um, which is why the slogan for Just Add Water is simplify your self care. It's almost yeah. like a daily reminder for myself as well, right. is that those that has to be a non negotiable. And of course, that's something I learned from my own personal journey when it was yeah. something I gave up. Yeah. It's like being on the plane. You put the oxygen mask on yourself first yes. before helping someone else. I mean, if you, you know, if you're not able to take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to help anyone else. Yes. So, yeah. and and it's to remind yourself like you're really important. Right. You know, the person sitting next to you is, but you're really important too. Mm-hmm. So this is what you've got to do. Right. Right. And that's so true. Like everyone gives up self care first. That's yeah. the first thing to go. And what happens is people give it up one day, then they give it up the next day, yes. and then you just. It just fades away from their life for years mm-hmm. and years and years. And before you know it, it's, it's, it hasn't been something they've done for years, you mm-hmm. know? And I see a lot of people that don't practice any form of self-care right. other than maybe, you know, they'll, they'll every January get a gym membership. Right. You know? mm-hmm. and that's exactly. about it. So I'm curious about the topic of self-care, self-care, what it means to you, mm-hmm. because I feel like everyone has a different um, kind of opinion about what, what self-care really involves. And mm-hmm. so, Spiritual self-care is obviously a big part of what you're um, teaching as well. Would you give us like a little rundown of like, you know, what you talk to your clients about as far as self-care goes, what routines to incorporate, what to think about? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm a big believer of rituals mm. and routines. It's just, it's something that you just have to start to implement and it could be just one or two things and then it becomes a habit and you don't have to think so hard about it. But when it comes to self-care, it's honestly, it's anything that truly nurtures you, you know, that you feel nurtured from. If you want to have that piece of dark chocolate after dinner and that's your thing every night, it's fine if you feel like that nurtures you. Now, if you're having that piece of dark chocolate because you are unhappy and you're stressed out and you feel like this is going to give you a moment of happiness, that's not exactly nurturing, you know. Right. Can't use it to fill a void. No. Yeah. So, you know, using food to or anything to um, as necessary 
verbalize, you know, your feelings is not a good practice. But when you feel nurtured from it, and we all know what that feeling is, it's like a hug. You know, when you get a hug from someone, or from a stranger even, you know, that feeling that you get, that's that's self-care that you want to give yourself. So whether it's setting aside 10 minutes to really make that tea, that coffee, that latte, and like that's your time. And then to really put that into your body and allow your body to receive it as opposed to, I need the caffeine, otherwise I'm going to die in 15 minutes. You know, that's self-care. Yeah. You know, and or, or just carving out 15 minutes. Um, and, you know, ideally that 15 minutes can grow into maybe an hour throughout the course of a day, whether you do it all at once at one part of the day or throughout the course of the day. But I tell clients to start, you know, start with what seems manageable for you. That's not really stressful. Start with five minutes in the morning. And before you get out of bed, go through your gratitude list, you know, go through three to five to 10 things that make you feel good that you're grateful for. And what I usually do from that step, and that that's that's something that's doable for people. After that, you need to go through three to five to ten things about yourself that you're grateful for, which is usually a little bit more challenging for people, but so important because again, it grounds you into who you are, the value that you bring to this world, and why it's so important that you set aside this time, you know, to do this for yourself. And then you set aside time for the next step, which is, you know, your morning ritual, whatever it is. You get your 15 minutes in a hot shower thinking about nothing or going through your affirmations. Or you have, I have my morning lemon water and my little immunity elixirs and my just add water and my juice. And, you know, everyone has their own sort of routine that nourishes them. So you find yours, you know, but you you commit to that in a way where you there's no guilt. You know, this is something that's feeding your body and your soul and it allows you to bring so much more and give so much more back. So that's usually what I go through with clients and then we kind of figure out what times of the day works best for them. Got it. Very nice. I feel like we're getting a message today. Yeah. <laughs> we've, done, we've done three podcasts today. Mm -hmm. And all three of them have have had a very you know, significant you know conversation on self care mm -hmm. and gratitude yeah. and really building that into your to your everyday. So I feel like we're getting yeah. that message that we yeah. need to we need to bring that in and incorporate that a Abs little bit more. Absolutely, like one of my favorite things that I do. So I'm I'm not good at keeping routines going sometimes, mm -hmm. and I need like a cue for a routine. So yeah. for gratitude, especially like that's one that. I just somehow forget to do it sometimes. So mm -hmm. I have this journal mm -hmm. called the five minute journal. Have you mm -hmm. seen this thing? I have seen it yeah. actually. I love it. I've been mm -hmm. using it for years. I've gone to like four journals. That's awesome. And I, my kids have journals. They have five minute journals for kids. Mm -hmm. And it prompts you to write down three things that you're grateful for mm -hmm. and write down three affirmations. So like what you're saying, mm -hmm. like three things you're grateful for about yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you write down at the at night, you write down something amazing that happened that yes. day. Yes. Because we forget what happens in mm -hmm. our day and we only focus focus on the negative yes. a lot. And just that mind shift is such a powerful change in your life Absolutely. to go from negative to positive in your brain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a big optimist. Like mm -hmm. I'm always optimistic every single day um, going through life, but it's easy to slip into thinking about the negatives all the time. Sure. And, and sorry, I was the change in your biology that happens when you switch from Pessimism to optimism oh, yeah. is gigantic. Oh yeah, right? yeah, and I love that, and I do that as night as at night as well. You know, to kind of go back over, and I think what you said is really important. You know, kind of go back over your wins that day. You know, I mean, go through like what you're grateful for. You know, and some are going to be the same every day, but you go through your wins that day because we are we're always already like five steps ahead. Like what I have to do tomorrow, the next week, the next month, and this project and that project. And you know, when you're when you can when you really have that practice of gratitude, um, something that it, it like where it's just kind of solid in you, you're, you're able to be present. And when you're, when you're present, you can really sit here and, and say, wow, I'm like, I'm so grateful to be here right now and doing this podcast with you guys. Like, this is amazing. And I'm here, you know, and that's, I think what helps us, we get there by practicing gratitude, you know? Right. Right. And I think also we're as humans, we're, we're more pain adverse than we are pro pleasure. Yeah. Right. If it's if you can have if you can have two choices, one path, you're going to get a bunch of pleasure or, you know, one path, you're going to get a bunch of pain. Yeah. You'll do more to avoid the pain. Sure. Than you will to go down the path of pleasure. Sure. Because pain is, you know, you could die from it. People mm -hmm. have this innate fear. So it's kind of a, a survival mechanism mm -hmm. that we have 
that programs us in this way. But the reality is and that goes all the way back to the caveman years when mm-hmm. when pain was because there's a tiger that's going to attack you and eat you. Yeah. But <laughs> our pain is different these days. Right. Like we live in a society where most things aren't life or death. Right. So, you know, actually gratitude is more powerful mm-hmm. than avoiding pain. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to we actually have to make a conscious decision yeah. as humans to change the wiring in our brain to allow that to be the case. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so true. And it, and it doesn't take that long. You know, you, if you do it every day for a week, two weeks, I mean, it just becomes breathing, you know, mm-hmm. it becomes right. so simple. It's just sticking to that, which is the same for obviously food, diet, exercise, all of it. If you can just get yourself to stick to it for two weeks, you know, you can, you can manage the rest of the time yourself. I actually set alarms on my phone. Mm. So I'll have alarms on my phone that will say, you know, journal that will say, you know, just like little, little messages throughout my day that will pop up and it'll, it'll remind me that like, oh, okay, let me take a few minutes and just like sit and be still for like five minutes or write something in my journal because you have your phone on you all the time. You don't always have your journal with you, but you at least have your phone with you all the time. But most of us do. So. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. So I want to touch on nutrition. Well, not I want to touch on it. I want to dive deep into nutrition. Oh yeah, let's <laughs> because go. this is obviously a huge area of expertise for you. And I find that many people that are in the world of nutrition, a lot of the messages are of course similar, but people mm-hmm. also have a lot of uh, philosophies of how they approach the topic with their clients. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very interested to hear when you have a new client, how do you? get their mind um, kind of set in the right direction about Mm -hmm. how they should think about food and nutrition as a whole. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, I myself meet a lot of my clients that they're just completely off base on what they think. And they've been, you know, because they've listened to the government that's given them an upside down food pyramid, you know, and all this misinformation. And I have to unwind a lot of that, you Mm -hmm. know? So I'm curious on your approach with that. Um, well, it kind of depends on where they're coming from already. I, I am fortunate that I do have a lot of clients that are already, they're health conscious, you know, but there's so much misinformation and there's just, there's overwhelmed with so many different, um, philosophies and opinions that they're not quite sure, you know, do I do keto? Do I do paleo? I mean, there's, especially with all these different trends, um, it's confusing for them, but, most of them at least have a um, mindset or a desire, you know, to be healthy and to feel good. So what we, what I usually do is, um, you know, we start with, we start with their lifestyle. We obviously like run the labs, we do the intuitive readings, but we, we, I want to know what their lifestyle goals are. Um, and that to me is the most important because we want to create something that's very sustainable. Um, and it's something that doesn't feel intimidating. So for most people, um, they want to, they want to, you know, most people want to like lose a little weight, you know, they want, they want, everyone kind of wants that little extra 15% to get them closer to perfection, you know? So we talk a lot about how perfection isn't, you know, the goal that we want. And there's a bunch of mindset and uh, guidance with that. But when it comes to nutrition, that is the main thing is that everything that we set up, I'm like, this is, we can modify this. So let's start with the first week, you know, like, what are your goals for this week? What is it that you have that's coming up? You know, whether they are trying to lose weight, they have a wedding, they are trying to get pregnant, they have an issue or, you know, like a, like a, maybe an illness that they're trying to, they're trying to get past or heal or prep for surgery. We, we short, we start, like immediate, like what is your goal for the next week? What's your goal for like the month? And what's your goal for the next three months? And so we just sort of implement basic things. So what I like to do is add in. So I'm very big on what you release, you also want to replace. So taking away like maybe one quote bad habit or food or, um, you know, like dietary habit that they know is not the healthiest, whether it's refined sugars or processed or packaged food. So taking away one or two of those habits or foods, but then replacing it with something so that they don't feel like they're being punished. They don't feel like they're giving up something. Um, And getting them to understand, explaining everything that we're putting into their body when we create a plan, how the science behind how these foods and what you're doing is actually healing you 
feeding you and, you know, it's prolonging, you know, prolonging your life. And so I think that once people understand the science behind it, when they understand why broccoli is so good for you, why, you know, your gut health is so important, when they understand that, they're much more connected to the plan. They're much more connected to the food because they get it. It's not just like they're doing something that someone told them to do. I mean, how long does that last for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. But once you're connected and you understand why, you're much more inclined to do it. So that kind of education is a real, it, that's why it's one of the main pillars of my practice because then you, 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 you'll do it, you know, you're, it's almost like you're empowering yourself right. to do it. Right. Fantastic. And then do you, um, so in the world of nutrition, mm-hmm. you have different ratios, like you mentioned sure. paleo and keto and, you know, there's all these different um, ways of looking at how to kind of proportion your diet out. Mm-hmm. How do you approach that part of it with people? Um, well, I'm plant based, mm-hmm. so I. And what I does don't, that mean? Can you explain exactly what plant based means? Okay. I mean, I, I I think I have a definition, but everyone has a little bit different definitions. I'd right. love to hear yours. Well, I I'm plant based, so I consider myself a vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know I, plants and fruits and vegetables are primarily what I take into my diet. When I was recovering from surgery, I did have you know bone broth and I did add collagen and you know certain things that I knew would help uh, heal um, and to help sort of aid and speed up that healing process, um, plus lots of hyperbaric um, Mm -hmm. oxygen treatment. Uh, So that's what I consider being plant-based. And so being plant-based, I don't, I recommend being plant, I guess, forward, which is just have a lot of vegetables, you know, um, and fruits, but primarily vegetables in your diet, even if you're, you're someone that feels like you need animal protein in whatever format that you want it, whether it's seafood or chicken or beef, um, but obviously to make sure that that's well, you know, properly raised and ethically raised. So, um, so... I'm sorry. Let me go back. What was your original question? Yeah, about again? the proportions, and I think you oh, addressed it. Yeah. yeah. So mostly so plant based, a little plants, bit of protein if you yes. need it. And um, as far as choosing plants goes, mm-hmm. do you have some rules that you give people a, a lot along those? I lines? am all grains. Yeah. You know, I am a huge fan of grains. People ask me about my hair. They ask me about my skin. I'm always like grains. You know, uh, you want the darker the grains, the more grains, the better for you. So whether or not you get it, you know, fresh or raw or steamed or cooked in some way or you get it juiced or blended or you know in a you know raw powdered format like right. that's you want to get that into your body it's alkalizing it's healing it's nutritious it's nutrient dense it's all the things right so to try and get that into your body every single day even if it's not like a meal you know i mm. i'm a big fan of doing a green juice every day. If you can't do it every day, Mm -hmm. do at least like four days a week, Mm -hmm. you know? And if you're someone that has alcohol, then you should be having a green juice for every glass of alcohol mm-hmm. that you have, you know, and that's my that's big rule for my clients, you know. Can you and just mix? Can you just make like mixers <laughs> with the green juice? And You're like, here, let me just. <laughs> exactly. Do you, right? you should actually make a line of mixers, like a, a green juice mixer. Perfect. You can pour yeah. this in with your like a yeah. tequila that's and water. give people an excuse to drink more. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you got to put a disclaimer healthy. on there. Right. Well, I mean, I get, technically they're still getting it into their bodies, so right. I wouldn't say no, don't do it. Maybe do it in addition to, but – but yeah, I mean that's something that yeah. for and for your community that is one yeah. thing I will always say. Try to do a green juice without sugar, you know, once a day or at least four or five days a week, yeah. and it'll really change your life, you know. And it doesn't have so to be a meal replacement. Um, it doesn't have. To, it can be any time of the day. Just get it in you, you know, and it'll really help. What do you think about powdered greens? Um, I think depending on who on, on the brand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and how it's processed and um, packaged, it can be really beneficial, especially mm-hmm. for travel. I mean, that's why we have just yeah. had water yeah. because it's better to get it in you in some way, shape, or form mm-hmm. than not at all, you know? Right. And granted, there are some like, you know, kales, there are certain there are certain vegetables that are better lightly steamed, you know, you can get more nutrients out of it. But for the most part, getting it in you mm-hmm. at all is is going to help you. Can I ask you though, when you say um, depends how it's processed and packaged, mm-hmm. I mean, how do we know when you're when you're looking to choose a good green powder? Because right. I'm I'm a fan of that. I, you know, for traveling, for convenience, I want to yeah. be able to to get it in me when I when I need it. Yeah. Um. How do you really make that? call that's um i mean to be honest for the consumer it's tough because it is such like 
it is such an oversaturated market, you right. know, and everybody's got something. And and I understand because we are part of that market right. now. And it's really about doing your research on the brand or at least on who the who the founders of the brand are. Like, do you trust them? Are, do they stand behind what it is that they do in their lifestyle? And, you know, that's that's probably the best way. And we make a lot of phone calls, you know, right. um, when we're using different products or, or if products want to partner up or mm-hmm. sponsor, we really dive deep to see what their processes, where they source from, how they do it, and that's and who, you know, who their founders are, you know, right. who are these people that are creating this brand? Are they in the country? You know, <laughs> I mean, um, so I think that, and that's a tough question because there is a lot of research that, that can go into it, but um, but that would probably be the best way. It's always sort of empower yourself with that education. That right. knowledge is definitely power. And giving yourself that that I guess those options to know okay I have there's 72 different greens powders out there but there's really only five mm-hmm. that are the top five or the best that I know I trust and I can rely on mm-hmm. um, and and you know it's something that we should all really do because we have that the resources and the information is out there to mm-hmm. sort of educate yeah. ourselves so speaking of just you know powders and st- let's mm-hmm. talk about just had water a little yeah. bit because when I came to do your show yeah. I was looking around for coffee and you're like no don't drink coffee drink this <laughs> instead yeah. and literally it was amazing it felt like I had drank a cup of coffee but it felt much cleaner I did not feel like that crash afterwards yeah. and you know my head wasn't like buzzing it just yeah. felt great yeah. and I mean the color's yeah. green so I'm drinking some right now and I yeah. love it so <laughs> tell us a little bit about Just Had Water and what's in it and um, what it does for you um, well yeah thank uh, you for asking um, Just Had Water is it's something it's actually a, a recipe that I've created like years ago mm-hmm. you know and I and I did it for clients because I have all these clients that travel all the time um, and they and just I mean, like all of us, whether you're an entrepreneur, or you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, no matter what it is you do, working busy mom, um, you're always go, 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 you know? And you barely have a second, you know, from getting from point A to point B where you've got to be on because you're there for a meeting or for a presentation or for what have you, right? And especially when you travel to, you land and you've, you, most of us don't give ourselves a day to just ease into the conference or the trip or the summer or whatnot. So I created this product because I want, I noticed that all my clients, and it's not just my clients, my friends, all of us, you know, when you travel and when you're doing, when you're kind of going hard like that, you're crashing, you know, after four or five days or once that adrenaline, you know, kind of turns off and, you know, you're you're bloated, you're fatigued, or you've got head fog and just all these things. So I decided to just, you know, create a recipe using, you know, like eight great greens. You know, there's tons of greens in it. There's obviously superfoods. There's adaptogens, which I think are so important for that adrenal fatigue, especially when we're going hard like that. And there's some digestive enzymes, probiotics, and prebiotics in it so that you can actually absorb all these nutrients. So I did that for a while, and they were literally just in Ziploc bags. And Mm -hmm. They would go travel, and I'm like, please take these with you. Just have one a day. Just add it to some water and just drink it and come back to me whole, you know? And it was really working for them. So um, a couple years ago at the Cannes Film Festival, and I think I shared this story with you briefly, um, it was – they were – was there with some clients. They were drinking this. They had some friends there that were looking at them and saying, what is that that you're drinking? Because you – I don't look or feel like you right now, and I was with you till 5 a.m. <laughs> so – and they wanted to know what it was, and I had some extra, and they had to try it. They loved it, and it became a thing, and they said, we need to – we need this, and we need to be able to get our hands on this. So now it's in a little package. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's basically what it's got. It's got um, it's got 12 grams of vegan protein. So it's vegan, organic, natural, all the good things, um, primarily from yellow peas. Uh, and it's low in calorie, which I like because then you can kind of bulk it up. If you want to throw a banana or some avocado in it and blend it up with some ice or some mm. berries, it's still – you know, under two or 300 calories, you know, it's not mm-hmm. something that becomes four or 500 calories like a lot of these other products out there that start off like 250. So it's an, it's not intrusive to your day. It's like a snack. You can have it anytime. Um, and it's low in sugar because we just use natural sugars and a little bit of stevia. And it's really to just kind of carry you through, you know, I say it's got everything that you need in a day because it's got those greens, it's got the superfoods, the adaptogens, and it's just got 
you know, enough goodness in you that I know that it's everything that you have on top of it is just, it's like a bonus. So that's basically what it is. And yeah, we have I'm, this in a cacao chocolate flavor. I know. I'm looking at this ingredient panel and it's, I mean, such an incredible combination of ingredients that mm -hmm. you've put into this. It Thank really you. seems amazing. And I just had my first one. I just tried it and it's <laughs> Yay. delicious. Yay. And full disclosure, right. I am on my fast. I'm in five <laughs> day of my fast. But I'm convincing myself that I don't feel like I broke my fast or I'm cheating because I'm going to substitute this for one of the prolonged packets. Yes. I, I feel yes. like this is, I like prolonged, but mm -hmm. I feel like this is a much better, um, you know, substitute yes. for, you know, that little bit of substance. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. And I feel great from it. I do feel a nice, you know, very present and I feel energized. Yeah. Um, and again, it tastes delicious. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. And, you know, and a little, and I don't actually share this um, very often, but a little disclaimer from me is that everything has been uh, reiki wow, So no there's way. energy that goes out for every single, every single order, every single packet, every single item. It's all received energy work. Wow. So, you know, I think that that actually, I think that actually I know, um, and now I feel comfortable saying it because it might've sounded a little bit of, a little bit woo-woo before, but we're in 2019 now and people <laughs> seem to like get it. Um, but yeah, you know, they're, they're, you're actually receiving a little bit of Reiki too when you get that packet. So Incredible. Yeah. And I'm, I see you brought us a couple cases, which yes. I'm very excited because yes, I'm going dig to in. Africa in a week. Oh, so this is perfect. So I'm going to take all of those. Like, <laughs> half of that is, I get the I'm, other I'm going to yeah. take half of them with me for, for the trip. Yeah, <laughs> I know. To it's enjoy. perfect. Yeah, yeah, you'll love it. And great. especially because you'll be in Africa and there's going to be all kinds of new bacteria right. around yes. you in the air and, yeah. and everything. It's perfect to try mm -hmm. and kind of help balance you out. Um, and can is, I ask you with the adaptogenic herbs? Mm -hmm. So that seems to be a, a, a pretty hot topic lately. Yeah. It's more and more relevant, which is great. Mm -hmm. But can we, I feel like a lot of people still don't really understand them or know what they are. Can we just dive into that a little bit? Yeah. So there's so many different ones, right? And uh, we have uh, maca and uh, <clears throat> lucuma in it. And so basically adaptogenic herbs are just plants to sort of help your body, help your body's um, adrenal system balance itself out. So it's not like giving more or less. It's just kind of helping you get back to what is, you know, no, what is uh, like a level, like a homeostasis for your body. Um, and so that's what these herbs are for. And you can, I mean, you can take too much, but you would have to take a lot. You know, mm -hmm. these are just small supportive, like micro amounts that if you have it on a daily basis, it's very supportive. It's like taking your vitamin C or your magnesium, just sort of on a daily basis, kind of help balance you. Um, and so with um, with just said water, we have maca, which is mm -hmm. you know obviously it's kind of good for um, a little bit of like endurance. Um, it's great for both men and women. Um, and then with the lacuma, there's also sort of skin beautifying you know benefits to it. It's great for skin. It's great for wound healing. Again, it's also great for just balancing out the hormones and especially when we're go, go, go all the time, you know, those, that cortisol kind of kicks in, mm -hmm. our stress levels go up. And that's what these herbs do is they kind of help balance out, you know, those stress responses that our body, that our body has when we are going a little bit too hard. When we're Got running. it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like any herb that has a functional benefit to it can fall into that category of an adaptogenic herb? Uh, maybe or? not any herb, but there's a large number of herbs. So there's like, you know, there's ashwagandha, there's holy basil, mm -hmm. there's maca, there's lacuma, there's, I mean, there's so many. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's it's very Ayurvedic, obviously. Right. And so there are, I mean, there's so many, I couldn't list them all, but I wouldn't say any, you know, there's Got some it. that kind of give you more energy. So for example, cacao is considered a plant medicine, but, you know, does it balance out your adrenals? Not necessarily, but it can, it can give you energy. So not every single, you know, you know, plant that has functional properties, but, um, but a lot of them. Got it. Yeah. So what's next for Serena? What are you, <laughs> I know you're doing the TV show. Yeah. I know, what else is going on so in your fun. life? Um, well, we actually have a really big project that I can't announce just yet. Oh. Um, <laughs> coming out in about two months uh, where you will be seeing a lot more of all of this. Oh, it is like, great. that's a little Exciting. teaser. I'll leave it on. So you, you can tell tuned. us. We'll, we'll wait to release this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really exciting. Actually, I'm really excited about it. And it'll, we'll 
we'll have little teasers and um, our website is relaunching. It's had a makeover. So that'll that'll come up in um, probably in the next couple weeks. We'll have the big relaunch for that and a lot of other products that are not only just add water, which falls under Serena Loves, um, but we have a lot of other um, products that I love that are supportive of culinary alchemy. Oh. So we'll have teas and crystals mm. um, and all kinds of like products that are, are supportive for mindfulness and spirituality. And then we have a couple more products in uh, the Just Add Water line that we'll launch before the end of the year. So that's very exciting and some new um, packaging that will be very fun for the user. Um, so that's what I can talk about. And then the thing that's happening in a couple months, you will see. Okay. So, But you very can go on the exciting. website and sign up and we'll send little messages to keep you informed. So speaking of the website, what's yeah. the website? The website is serenaloves.com. So it's just www.serenaloves.com. Loves.com and um, just add water, you can find there, but it's also under just at water inc.com. Oh, great! Yeah, and then also people can find you at Serena Loves on Instagram or what's your Instagram uh, handle? Uh, the Instagram handle is Chef. Serena Poon. Got it. Um, and the TV show has its own little one. It's uh, Serena Loves TV. And you can find you know it on YouTube for the show. It's under Chef Serena Poon on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's Serena Loves TV. Sorry, it's a little confusing, guys. There's a couple different handles. But, <laughs> but definitely reach out to me on Instagram because I always respond. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, great. It was so great having you. This so was amazing. Fun. Thank yes. you so much, you guys. This was <laughs> awesome. You. Yes, so I can't fun. wait to go practice some culinary alchemy now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to do it. It'll be really fun. I should come in and do a little demo for you guys. I yeah. love it. Everybody, because do that thing with the paper. You, you'll we realize. Will. I'm try it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do it a few times because okay. you, might, you might get lucky once, twice, and then. But do it a few times, and then you'll start feeling those little triggers. Your ear yeah. may itch. There might be a little thing, and it'll tell you. Very That's cool. Really yeah, cool. It's really cool. Great. Well, we can't wait to have you back on at some point and Yay. can't wait to find out what's happening in two months too. Yeah. <laughs> sure gonna We're going to keep in touch. <laughs> For sure. Thanks so much, you guys. This You're is awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. 